Um, great. So Milio, Milimo, as you will know, because I've mentioned him a few times now, he's our serve liaison in Assumption Parish in Mazbuka in Zambia. So Milimo, I'm sure we'll go into a bit more detail, but just to start us off, um, a little bit of information about Serve in Zambia. So Serve work in partnership with different organizations in Assumption Parish in Mazabuka. Um, the first partner being St. Makita's Association in 2008, if I'm right. Um, you will recall Rory and Faker talking about Serve and our partnership model uh, back during the last forum a couple of weeks ago. Um, but it, it, this is can be seen in Serve's work in Zambia as well. Um, and Serve have sent immersion groups um, to Mazabuka over the last few years and before COVID came and kind of put an end to all that for a little bit we were about to send our first um, volunteer program our volunteer group to um, Zambia in July 2020 our first one in a while um, headed by Rory who you all know but yeah of course that, or COVID put an end to that but hopefully it'll be one of the first ones that we might be able to get back maybe in, in, in the near future. So yeah, Milimo, if you want to take it from there and you can tell us a bit about yourself and Assumption Parish and um, yeah, a little bit of work, a little bit about the work that Serve does in Assumption Parish. Thank you very much. Um, as she has already said, my name is uh, Changa, um, partner of Yeson. Sorry, Milimo, would you just move the microphone up a little bit more, please? Okay. Um, I'm William Tanga, self partner liaison working in Mazabuka Assumption Parish. Um, I work with uh, a number of partners that are working with self. Who are, uh, the main partner is Assumption Parish. Then we have the Avalora Primary School, St. Patrick, Flamboyant, and St. Patrick School. Uh, these other partners, uh, like Ulkavila Art Center, that is also working within uh, the premises of the youth center in Assumption Parish. So these are the partners that we work with. Uh, since the time of uh, the new partnership program started, they have sent a volunteer who is uh, Darren. Uh, Darren worked with uh, Parish and these are other partners for a year in some months, which is about 16 or so months. Uh, was here in Zambia. Uh, uh, there are a lot of work that have been done by by SAVE uh, here in Zambia, or say in Mazabuka. Uh, to begin with, uh, the renovation of the uh, St. Pakita Association or the compound, uh, SAVE has elected the, the wall fence to protect the, the area around here. Uh, for security. Uh, they've renovated the house uh, starting from the inside, uh, the painting and uh, the electrical system. Uh, they also done the, the youth center hall, which was also renovated to the standard that uh, it is now uh, suitable for use by the young people in the, in the community. There's also which was being done. Um, apart from the inside of the house, also the outside of the house, inside the wall fence, which was already built, uh, SAVE has also uh, done the, the work on behalf of, uh, Darren has done the work on behalf of SAVE. Uh, it is, uh, now the place is well secured and uh, the house is very good for, for stay by so many different people, young people are able to use the, the place. This has been done by at the youth center. Not only that, SEV has done uh, the work with uh, the Ogolola, where they built a one by three classroom block, which was already there, but SEV has finished it in terms of uh, building and renovating it to be to a standard of uh, pupils to, to learn from it, or students to learn from it. Uh, SEV has also built a modern abortion block for the pupils, uh, which the school never had in, since it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's been established. Uh, they never had the modern one, but now they have a modern one that the pupils are able to use, which is, uh, which is working on very well for the, for the pupils. 
conflict around the around the school. Uh, going forward, uh, SIF has uh, has also funded uh, school schools like St. Patrick's with uh, teaching and learning aid for the people. But now they have uh, enough learning aid for for the pupils to get the desired education that they need to have. Mission that uh, the mission also desired the end of the day to have because all of the, the challenges, serious challenges that the schools were facing, and uh, that is uh, that is the theme of the past as we stand now, as we are talking now, because we have all those things. Seb is also working with uh, the Ogolo uh, Lambayan Special School, where the school is uh, being was funded with. Uh, with the chickens or the layers chickens that are there to help and support uh, the pupils in terms of the feeding program because the pupils that they are, the students that they have there are disabled or uh, yeah, those are disabled students that they have. And they are funded with that project and the project is doing very well. The uh, pupils are able to, to have a new out of uh, the same project and uh, they are able to raise funds for them to, to manage itself and to manage the school and to manage all those things that are needed by the school. So those are the works that we are done by by Darren. And uh, apart from that, uh, Save also supported the uh, the community garden here, where we are teaching the young people on how to do the garden, uh, just giving them the skills that will help them move forward uh, in the future. Instead of them just sitting home and doing nothing, but at least they are able to do a garden that is able to support them as, uh, support the families and uh, themselves to raise some income so they live at the end of the day. So that's, uh, those are the works that uh, Dallin did during his time. Uh, then I came in to, to work in place as a partner at yes, and for self, and uh, a number of projects have been uh, have been done so far during the time I started working uh, with uh, the youth center or the assumption uh, continued with the garden project that Darren has left. Uh, the, the garden is there even now; they are they are preparing for for the garden. And, Doing the, the gardening. Just for the same, the, the whole instance of the gardening is to empower young people with the skill so that at the end of the day, they should have a skill that is going to help them to live on and, and, and have something to keep them busy. So that that, that is ongoing. Uh, apart from, from that, uh, we have done uh, training in computer skills. Uh, which is a major challenge that we have uh, as we are moving with technology. Uh, it's uh, something that is it's so very important uh, for young ones to, to have or the youths to have the skill to do with the, how to use the computer and how to to make use of of, 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 of the technology. So anything that you do, you're supposed to use the. The, the computer or it's supposed to use uh, the technology to go forward. So we had to take about a good number of students to the uh, Flavio Training Institute, where they learned the skills on how to use the computer. And we had those eight or uh, 10 students who did uh, the computer training skills. And from there, we had uh, 15 youths who are doing uh, 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 in skill by Chepe House. Those students, uh, the 10 have graduated. They have finished yet waiting for graduation. And then the five, they are starting uh, next month for their trainings. Uh, we requested them to start them in different numbers because uh, because the, the school had no enough machines to do them at, at the same time, but they'll do it in different time. So those students, they are, they are doing that. We've also managed to purchase uh, through save uh, uh, 
about six sewing machines that are going to be used in the youth center. And then the youths that are doing the Terali uh, projects are going to benefit from them by doing the sewing in the youth center. So those students, uh, the 10 that have graduated, we will choose the best six that are going to start using the machines in the youth center uh, to do the sewing of the uniforms for the schools around our, for our partner schools, to just help them get, um, just help them get uh, uniforms at a very cheaper price so that we can also sustain the community in a different way uh, to have them in school because uh, parents will not manage to pay a very expensive uniform. So it's better if we are doing it ourselves here, and then we support the community through the, the same skills that- uh, I know, I but I honestly- Then from there, uh, we have also managed to buy so to, to get funding from SEV to buy the school desk for the Ogolola Community School, which is about 50 desks that are, are yet to be delivered to the Ogolola by Friday this week, uh, which is a, a very good uh, good development to my side because uh, a good number of pupils uh, in Yogolola they had no desk. So for this time around, uh, the school will have desks and then SEV has funded that project, which is a which is a plus and a very good thing to, to our community. We see a good number of pupils uh, getting the best or the better education that uh, we are looking forward to, to have. So, uh, the, the project that we are uh, running during my time, and, uh, uh, we've also managed to get another funding from SAFE that is to help um, of uh, St. Patrick Secondary School, uh, buying of the school learning and teaching aids, which was recently funded uh, by SEV, and then that is uh, that is that is a plus again to us. The school is also now doing fine. Uh, all the partners are are doing fine. The partners are happy with the work of SEV. Partners are uh, doing uh, are pleased with the, how SEV is working. Going forward, we have a project that uh, we are yet to, to do as Aurora is coming to Zambia, uh, which is a very vital project for me as, as it stands now, because uh, I, was, uh, I, was, I was just checking on a few young people who are doing, who are submitting some CVs, and I was, I was asked to check on them, and I've seen it to be need now that uh, the young people need to, to be taught on how to write the CVs and how to, to improve on their writing of the CV so that they can be easily considered uh, for, for the job. Uh, looking at the way the CVs are being written now, I think it's, uh, it's a need for us to, to do that. So as Rura comes, she will have that project of training the youth or the young people on how to write the CVs and then how to how to improve on that. Uh, uh, when that is done, it will help the, uh, the youth to have a high chance of, of, of getting employed. So that is, uh, that, is, that is a project that is uh, underway. We, actually, before that, we had also a project that uh, was funded by SAVE uh, two, two months ago, uh, the project for, for the Youth Congress where we saw 150 youths. Uh, we are in attendance of the Congress and uh, it really helped the, the young people to, to learn different, uh, different skills uh, in terms of communications and, uh, and just how to manage themselves, uh, to stay away from drug abuse and, uh, and to become their own uh, entrepreneurs and their own bosses. So all those things were being done and they were being funded by SEV. We saw so, uh, good speakers traveling as far as Copper Belt, province, uh, Saka province, to just come and uh, give the input on the importance of uh, how one should be self-reliant, how one should be self-sustainable by such 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 project. Uh, yeah. I think if the, yeah, I think that's what we are doing at the moment. And 
not forgetting also the time of Darren, we had a very powerful workshop, leadership training, which uh, was, uh, was there. That saw a good number of youths uh, getting empowered with the knowledge, others getting employed out of the certificates that uh, Darren uh, gave out after the leadership training because it was considered as an attachment to the, to the CV. And that, uh, that, that organization uh, looked at a person who has an ability to do with the leadership skills and uh, how to train the young people to become self-reliant. So that one of the youths was, uh, was picked and I was, um, I was his reference and I was called to recommend that year, and so we did just that to help them get the help. As we start to talk now, she's working, she's, she's doing fine. She's learned, she's, she's on a different level. A good number of them, they've managed to go to, to make decisions in life to start going back to school. Others are going back to school because they have learned uh, that from themselves, uh, from out of, out of the effort of self, the leadership training has made people to begin to realize uh, their values and uh, their potentials of doing things in life. So that's uh, that's what uh, that's what that's what has driven us to to that extent. Yes, they had to see to it that the, the young people are getting the desired information, the desired uh, things that they need. So I think that's what we are doing so far with uh, with sale. And yes, uh, yeah. Questions and uh, there are any contributions. Uh, you are very much welcome. Thanks, Billy. Well, just while people are maybe thinking of any questions, I'll put the link to our the page on our serve website. Um, that kind of goes into more detail of what Millie Mo was just speaking about there. So I'll just throw it in. And for anybody who's listening and doesn't know who um Darren is Darren was serves long-term volunteer in Zambia so he was there for 17 months and he might be um listening in on Facebook at the moment so if he is hi Darren um if I can Paula would you mind actually finding that link to the Zambia page I'm yeah, trying to copy sure. and paste but it's not copying um yeah so Darren was long-term volunteer for 17 months there and he did as Millimo was speaking about, like youth leadership training and, um, and did a load of other workshops while he was there. So like life skills training and sports days. And he initiated the community garden project, if I'm correct, the one that Millimo was speaking about, where they, the youth were um, trained how to grow vegetables and to um, empower themselves with skills to, kind of, to sustain themselves. And also in that link as well is more information about other projects that Millie Mo was just speaking about there. So the chicken project um, in Flamboyant Special School. So that was funded by CERV in March, 2020 and further funded again, a couple of months later. Um, and on that page, you can see that they have, they probably have more now, but they had 300 chickens worth that and laid up to hundred eggs daily, which the school was then able to sell in the local market. Um, and then the classrooms and the toilet block project in Loya Balola Primary School, um, where Serve helped fund three, the building of three classrooms and toilet block. So again, on that link, more information about that and also pictures to go along with it, because that always, always helps. And Millie Mo speaking there a little bit about kind of the, I suppose, the, the impact that the CV and interview prep skills workshops that some of you will be partaking in with online with um, some of the young people in uh, Zam in Zambia, the impact that that will have, the benefit that that will have in the local community, so that they can be equally considered for jobs when once they come of age, and also give the youth a higher chance of getting employed and that kind of thing. So, yeah, I suppose does anybody have any questions? Um, or Paula or Fiacra, if you want to come in with anything, because I personally have never been to Zambia, so I've never been to see any of the, the projects, even though someday I will, but I've never been to see any of the work. So if you guys wanted to jump in and say anything, I saw that Rory was there for a while, but he Rory's in Kenya at the moment. Um, so he probably couldn't join us for very long, but he will be as he will be in Zambia when you're doing some of the workshops there. So 
we'll have more people on the ground. But yeah, Paul or Faker, if you've anything you want to add, or if anybody has any questions, equally, if anybody has any questions on Facebook, they can put them in the comments as well. Uh, thanks a million for uh, talking to us today, Millie Mo. Appreciate it. Um, I had two quick questions. The first one, I was wondering, could you expand a bit on the uh, computer skills workshop? Can you hear me all right, by the way? I see you leaning in. Yeah, OK. Um, and what kind of skills came up in that? And um, how did the students react to that? And uh, also, will those students who participated in the that workshop also be in the CV uh, workshop? Will there be a bit of crossover there? Um, and the other thing I was wondering with the students, and maybe they're not all picked yet or whatever, but uh, the students who will be participating in the CV workshop, what kind of jobs are they targeting? Like you spoke about one person, a uh, young woman who got a job from the leadership course, or at least that helped her CV. Um, I'm just wondering what kind of profile job she was going into and um, just to get a, a picture of who we might be, you know, who might be participating in, in these workshops. Thank you. Um, the, the types of, or such the types of the job that, uh, that, that, that I expected to be getting from, from these uh, young people, it's just a normal formal job. I would say um, uh, a job that will help someone to 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 a C, to write a CV that will help someone to get a formal job. I would, I would put it that way. Uh, there's uh, I think that's that's the age the age group of the people that uh, are expected to be in the um, in the workshop for the CV. It's uh, the age from 18 years. Uh, 34 years, that's, that's the target, or 35 years, that's the age group of the youth. So you've already seen that uh, the job that uh, the type of the CV should be that of an advanced level, that someone can present to a very serious organization for, for the job that they, they need to, to get. So that's, that's, the, that's the age group. Uh, those who did the computer skills, uh, it's my desire that they should uh, also attend uh, the workshop because they, they have a skill that they need to then present somewhere. They have a skill that they need to, to then use when they, they, they apply for the job. So that's, that's my desire as well, that uh, those who get the computer skills, they should also join the training. I hope I've, I've, I've answered the clear the question. That's great. Thank you very much. That clarifies it. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody has any other questions, feel free to unmute yourself, or you can also put it in the chat if you prefer not to unmute yourselves. Yeah, hi, Milimo. Um, thanks for talking to us today. Um, I, yeah, just what Joe was asking there, actually, I, I was kind of thinking about, you know, when you're doing sort of CVs and sort of preparing, you know, for applications for different jobs, I guess that might be, yeah, it might be useful if when, you know, we'll get it, we'll, like you mentioned, sort of a, a normal kind of professional job. Yeah, if I think part of the benefit of doing a CV kind of, you know, skills thing would be sort of, you know, how you adapt your CV based on the job you're applying for. So maybe as you're kind of talking to the group and sort of in preparation for when we go to it, you know, if there's a kind of list of example jobs that we could maybe use um, to kind of, you know, show maybe do a, do a sort of a case study or a, a workshop on sort of an example one how we how we would adapt it maybe, you know, to um, to a particular role, and then how you would maybe change it for uh, if you're applying for two different jobs how you might change it slightly for a different role again you know for that different type of role like you know so that might be useful it's just just a sort of whenever Joe was talking there it kind of popped into my mind, so. If that's if that's something that like if you could have maybe a kind of list of of different kind of jobs that some of the some of the the young people are interested in, you know that might be a good input to the discussions. I think. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for for that input. I uh, will definitely uh, list some jobs that uh, are commonly found here or that are uh, are there. 
So at, at the end of the day, it will be very easy for, for you who are teaching us, who are educating us on how to write the CVs to, to pick up on that. And then uh, it's, on, it's not only jobs that to require the CVs, even applying for, for going to higher learning institutions, other institutions now, they require you to provide a CV. So also that uh, will, be, will be done, and I will share that with uh, Paola for knowledge. So at the end of the day, they can, they can offer you that, uh, that, 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 that information that I'm going to submit. I'll submit that information this week, probably this week or early next week. Thank you. Yeah, and I guess that kind of runs both ways as well, Brian or whoever else is um, doing the workshops. It's something that you can bring up in your workshops about how to alter your CV slightly for different job positions and also different, um, as Malimo was saying, whether it's a, a higher level institution course or whether it's a job interview. But exactly, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Any other questions from anybody? It doesn't have to be just about the workshops, by the way. It can be about life in Mazabuka or some of the work that Minimo does or some of the work that serve funds or is involved with. What was the sports on the sports day? Sorry? What was the sports uh, or what, what sports did the, the young people like, like uh, doing that was done as part of the sports day? Okay, uh, I didn't get clearly, but let me try to phrase your question. You said, uh, what sports uh, do the youth do on a sports day? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have different kind of sports. I don't know, uh, we have uh, soccer, which we call football here. We'll have uh, a netball for girls. Uh, we have volleyball, we have basketball. We have indoor games uh, that are normally done. Uh, uh, we have so many different types of games. But anyway, those are the major ones that I've mentioned that are commonly being done here. And those are the ones that we do. And I'm sure when you check on the, on the, on the link that uh, Nolik has sent, I'm sure you see where people are playing soccer, where people are dancing. And, these other things, just 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 so that common games that we we have around here. Thank you. Yeah, there's there should be um, pictures somewhere on the website, maybe of the sports day. That um, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but when Darren was there and he did the the youth skills work day work day workshops there would have been sports and as well um for the rest of you i would have sent a kind of a rough outline of the the timetable for the workshops that you'll be involved in and on the last day there'll be a sort of celebration kind of day and there should be hopefully some sports there that day that day as well and because rory's on the ground i'm sure he'll take loads of pictures and videos and send them on so they'll get an idea of what's kind of happening on the grounds as well Does anybody have any other questions? This is kind of a just a general question, mainly about that. Um, I, I kind of already know the answer to, but just for the for the group, could you just tell them a little bit about Mazabuka and you know where it is in Zambia and maybe just kind of what the what the main the main things going on in Mazabuka are? Okay, okay, thank you. Um, Mazabuka, it's a it's a small town. I'd say it's uh, a small town that uh, has a good population of people. Uh, uh, there are a lot of good things about Mazabuka. Uh, and there are a number of bad things about Mazabuka, but at the end of the day, we only concentrate on the good things because our goal is to see that uh, Mazabuka is a better place for everyone to, to stay in. Uh, Mazabuka, it's, uh, I would say, it's a, it's a place where uh, the, the biggest uh, production which is being done is a, a sugar cane plantation, where you find the biggest um, uh, factory for sugar should be in Africa now. It's, uh, it's based in Mazabuka. 
Mandabuka has a lot of plantations, has a lot of potential for the young people, has a lot of potential for everyone to stay in and to live. I mean, basically, that's that's Mazapuka. Uh, Assumption Parish community, it's a, it's a, it's a peaceful community that uh, looks forward to receive the NHSM and uh, that looks forward to, to be around with. I think I can't say, maybe I can, that's what I can say much about Mazapuka. There's, there's nothing much harm, there's nothing much good. So it's sunset and so it's sun because it's very hot in Mazapuka. Eh? compared to, 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 to the other side of the country when the light is very hot. Also when it gets cold like the way it is now, it's, it's cold um, in serious jamba. So <laughs> that's, that's the way it is about Mazapuka. I think that's, that's a picture of Mazapuka, I would say. It's not as, as clear as it is where I'm seeing here on Brian is uh, <laughs> the camera. It's very clear and I would love to be. This, is, this is just a picture. <laughs> And be, it's not oh, a, a oh, yeah, it's just a it's picture, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> okay, okay. No, it looks like you're outside, and then they... <laughs> no, no, <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. So that's the way it is about uh, that's that's the thing about the book. Any other question or contribution? It's very important. Fuka has been to Mazapuka. I can also add something about Mazapuka, what he has seen in Mazapuka, what he has learned about Mazapuka. It's very important for, for people to also hear from him because he has been near. Yeah, I was interested in that as well. What were your impressions, Fika? Can you hear us? Sorry, I froze there right when uh, right when I was speaking. We, you were asking me, were you? Yeah, he, Joe wants to know what were your impressions of Mazabuka. Yeah, I, I've been to Mazabuka twice. I was there about three three years ago, I think. Um, so yeah, it was June that June, I think, was the first time I met you, Milimo, and then I was there the following January, just before just before COVID uh, struck. Um, but yeah, no, it's a uh, fascinating place. It's kind of about I'm going to say about six hours drive ish, depending on the driver from the capital Lusaka. And uh, so it's in the southern province. Um, and I suppose it's, it's probably the biggest, the biggest town in the southern province, is it? Or second biggest? Or third biggest? <laughs> the biggest town in southern province is Livingston. Livingston, yeah. Then Choma, then, um, then Mazabuka, then going, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it kind of um, there's there's a, there's a lot going on there. The where the the volunteers used to stay, it's right beside the the Assumption Parish, uh, so it's kind of like a, a volunteer house, I suppose. And then uh, just a few minutes walk away is the the market, um, where there's just absolutely everything happening. It's just such an exciting place uh, to just to you kind of get an opportunity just to to buy everything from the local the local sellers. And there's there's chicken markets and there's fruit and veg and there's there's all sorts of animals. Um, it's all very exciting, um, and then the, the center of the town. It's kind of it's on the it's on the main it's on the main road essentially to Livingston and onto the border into Zimbabwe. So there's constantly these huge trucks going through, and it's it's really interesting to just see all the different life that kind of crops up along the the truck routes, and there'll be people selling um, you know all sorts of stuff. I think Milimo mentioned the Luke Villa Art Center where they they make all sorts of artistic and um, stuff. You know, carvings and stuff out of stone and kind of um uh crisp cards as well and they, they'd sell some of them to people passing through so there's, there's a huge amount of uh, people traveling traveling all sorts of places whether you're going to lusaka one way or you're going down to down to livingston and victoria falls the other way so it gets, gets a lot of gets a lot of passing trade um but yeah i mean i suppose my experience of it was just fantastic just really welcoming um the right beside where the volunteers stay is the Loya Bolola School, which is the primary school that Milimo mentioned. And anytime we were there, we were always greeted. I think the, the first time I was there, there was a big performance put on by all the students. And it was kind of like we didn't know anything about it. They just decided to do it that morning. And suddenly there was like a two hour performance put on. And I remember the the vice principal, I can't remember his name now, he was he was dancing and everything. And then I ended up dancing as well, which I was not prepared for. Uh, but yeah, it was just a really, really positive experience, and hopefully, I'll get to 
get to be back soon. Yeah, I think that's my uh, quick. I don't know. Did I do? Uh, did I do a good job of explaining what Mazabuka is like, Milimo, from a from an outsider perspective? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, actually, did a very good, uh, very good, very good explanation about it. Um, on there, there's just one thing, one or two things that I'd forgotten to mention in my presentation. Uh, Luca Villa accent I've seen Paola has written has also managed to print out the Christmas cards. I'm sure you saw them in in, in Ireland. Those were done by the Luca Villa accent who are working closely to flamboyant special school because the, the pupils from flamboyant special schools, they, are, they have a disability. So they learn much of the skills and then they are sent here to do the, the job. Uh, apart from that, uh, SEV also funded uh, projects during the time of Darren where we planted maize and sunflower at the farm. And uh, the project did very well and uh, Right now, out of the project that Darren did, uh, we received some chickens that uh, it's now ongoing, the project for the chicken, also at the youth center. And we are feeding uh, uh, the, the chickens using the maize and the sunflower that was uh, being produced from there. So also this is out of the effort of SEV that uh, things are happening and the youths are benefiting out of it. We, we hope to see a good number of youths benefiting. Um, there, are, there are a number of challenges uh, I didn't mention that youths are facing around Mazabuka, a number of challenges, which I can say uh, if we are to, to help out is to make sure that a youth becomes self-reliant, self-sustainable. So uh, the youth's uh, challenges that they are facing mostly is a uh, lack of support in terms of doing skills training, having a skill going to, to college or going to universities. Those are the major challenges that they face. And others, they face the challenge of, uh, I would say maybe early marriages, early pregnancies, they have their children and then they don't go back to school because they have no one to support them after that has happened. So if we were to get uh, back, going back to the grounds and say, now we need to, to, to look into these who have failed to manage themselves, or to manage, uh, to be managed by their parents to go back to school because maybe they had uh, they had failed or they had uh, a girl child had a child also, so the parents will not be able to support them to go back to school. How possible? How best is it that we can uh, get them back to school or take them back to to get a skill and uh, have a skill for? It? To, to have a living at the end of the day because they have already a burden. On top of one is burden has another burden of having a child to take care. So we need uh, uh, such support from 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 self to, to take them back to school, to give them a skill, and then at the end of the day they become self reliant. So, uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's that's the biggest challenge that we have around Mother Boca. The other challenge that we have. Um, we really need to have a rehab center because a number of young people around here, they are now becoming serious drug addicts and uh, they abuse a lot of drugs. So if we have um, a place where we have a good number of workshops, as we are already having workshops, to train them on how to, 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 to stay away from the misusing of uh, the drugs, that will really help us to to, to, to build a better community for, for Mazabuka, a better community for our young people around here. So those are, those are the, the challenges that we, we are currently facing in Mazabuka. Uh, I would look forward to, to see to it that uh, a good number of people, of the young people, are sent back to school. A good number of young people are going back to skills training. And those who've done, uh, who have done well with their school, uh, like the, the, they've got good grades in their school, I would look forward for them also to, 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 to be trained or to have an opportunity to go to, to the school, to school where they'll get uh, good, 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 uh, good accredited with good certificates or good diploma or whatever to help them in a living and support their families. So that at the end of the day, 
uh, when one is uh, is empowered uh, with the an easy thing for the other person also to be empowered by the person who has been empowered by them by self i think that's uh that's, that's those are one of the major challenges that we are facing right now and we are looking forward to to, to a better community through the support of self to empower them in terms of the skills education wise like i always say to the people around those who want to go back to school i talk to the next door school which is the Ogolola, those who want to go back to school and start the school by the Ogolola. I always offer my, myself to talk to the school and then uh, give them the space. For now, yeah, I understand in Zambia it's free education, but I, I don't really know what free education is because at the end of the day, there's a certain amount of money that you have to pay that is called free education. So I don't know what it means. So parents would still fail to manage to pay for them so that, that, that certain fee, which is called free education, for them to go back to school. So if we are to, to support them also in that angle and probably not to take them towards others who feel shy to go back to class and learn with those who don't have children, what we will find a way of having them a class and then start learning by themselves. That that definitely will help. Though I'm in a process to talk to, to the school head teacher at the Ogolola to, to help in such a manner, that will help us a lot, that will help us a lot to, to build a better community for, for our place. And that's, that's what I had, uh, had forgotten to, to mention about. Thank you. Unless there are questions about that. Many more. Um... I, is it fair to say that even though you're saying that there's free education in Zambia, the schools don't have much budget, they don't have a lot of money to put into resources and, uh, you know, even the upkeep of the school, um, which has led to serve supporting many of the schools around Mazabuka and Assumption Parish uh, by offering education resources such as school books, learning, learning essentials, uh, and also investing in the upkeep of the school and renovating um, classrooms and tile blocks and things like that as well. So like it's, it is fair to say that even though there's free education, the schools still need um, a lot of help. Yes, they will still really need your, your help very much. Yeah. And this week in particular is exciting, I think, because the the school desks should nearly be ready in Loya Lavola, are they? Yes, the school desks, yeah. like I mentioned, they'll be ready on Friday, which is the first of, of, of July. If I'm not mistaken, the first of July, the school will receive the school desk that was funded by SEF. And Definitely, they are organizing themselves to receive the desks. Just today, they called me to find out how ready the desks are. And I was in touch with a person who is, uh, who is our contractor on the ground, who does the, all the work for self. He's, he's ready, I'm sure, by Friday to submit, to hand over the desk. So, yeah, we are looking forward to, to that. We are looking forward to that. Just to explain the... Um, Serve so recently received um, some funding from INTOs, the Irish uh, National Teachers Organization, uh, through an application from one of our past volunteers, Annette McGrory. Uh, so we were successful in getting a grant to help cover for the cost of these 50 school desks. So Serve uh, also added funding to this, which was funds raised through uh, three different schools here in Ireland that have been involved in our SDG, SDG Champions Schools program, which uh, Rory Murphy was leading. So, um, so it, it is quite exciting, and we're going to we're looking forward to sharing photos of the desk whenever we get them, and uh, sending out a bit of an update about that as well. So it's a, a really good um, opportunity for us to to get that grant from INTO and the funds raised from the schools that we're involved with. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really good. Thanks. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I'm sure it was, uh, for me, I would say it's, it's, it's indeed a plus. Uh, apart from that, uh, 
we also had a project, and I don't know whether it will still continue, but it will be good for it to continue, the Penipo project, which has really helped uh, young people in the school to learn on how to write letters, uh, how to improve on their English, and how to just know how the world around, apart from this Zambia, the way it is, it has really helped uh, a number of, of them. And uh, sure, they are looking forward to, to continue with the, with the project because it has, it has brought about more of the positive uh, part of understanding how things are. And like the way we, we just see things, the way you are around where you are, it has, it has helped uh, the, the young people. Equally, just like uh, the trip we had in Osaka, which was supported by myself, it has, it has brought about a positive thinking, understanding, and knowing that uh, life is not life where you are alone. There's also life where you are not, uh, you are not there. And there's, there's, there's a lot you can learn from the place where you are not uh, staying. So the young people in Mazabuka, they've also learned something where the time we travel to, to young Africa in Osaka, that uh, has also helped them a lot to to improve and understand that uh, they can do better than what they are doing in, uh, in Mazaboka. So, so it's, it's, it's something that is working for me and for, for the young people around, it's something that is working. Yeah, thank you. And um, speaking about the desks and just generally what Mazabuka looks like and what and life in Mazabuka, I'm sure when Rory's there, we can kind of, use and abuse him a little bit and try and get him to send us videos of um, the community and the work that's going on there. Um, yeah, if there's any other questions, feel free to ask, otherwise we'll stop the, the Facebook live stream at least. No. Even a contribution from whatever we've heard, it's very important we can hear it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'll just finish off with just the, uh, some words about um, the you know, the work that we're doing in Mazabuka to me is, is just so important because it's building it's building up, as Milimo has already said, that kind of um, inspiring young people rather than just offering resources and things like that as well. So the, the leadership trainings and, and all the workshops that we've planned to do in the next few weeks um, with Rory, and you guys in Think Global Act Local, um, there, you know, it's it's just giving young people an opportunity to um, to be inspired, you know, even if it's just getting their CV right and improving their CVs. All these things help. Um, so it's 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 not just about offering school desks and books and things like that. It's also um, building up their confidence and making them believe that they can, you know, they can work themselves or get them to get themselves into a, into a job, even if it's with skills training, computer training, things like that. Um, so that's, that's kind of what we're striving to do really. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it would be, it was so important. I feel if uh, I can go around the house and uh, this has never been done yet, they can see the work that uh, Darren left. And uh, they'll have a picture of how the, the house is and uh, how it looks like. Just maybe two or three uh, around the house. And you have to show the mayo flag. Yeah, Sam, 2023. You're able to see the mail flag? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, did, you, did you hear, Milimo, they lost? They lost at the weekend. They're out of the, the All-Ireland. Kerry beat them. They were, they were awful as well. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Next year is their chance. Thank you. <laughs> Then we'll get to see. So, this is the corridor. 
And this is the painting that we did. It's changed a lot since um, the time I visited in 2019. It's great to see. Yes, so yeah. this side, this side where I'm standing now, we call it uh, the female side. It's painted blue and white. The other side is painted uh, yellow and white. It's the male side. So just, uh, just sort of doing it uh, that way to support, uh, to have a clear picture of how the young people, when they come in the house, they know where they're supposed to be. That is, if have two different gender. So that was that was the idea that we had me and Darren when we were doing the, the painting. Great, thanks for that, Milimo. I'm I might stop live streaming now. Okay, I've stopped live streaming. Last time I I thought I'd stop live streaming when I streaming and I hadn't this time <clears throat> and Faker speaking of um yourself and the video or the, the you dancing in the community I'm fairly sure there's a picture somewhere or a video that I saw and I will definitely try and find that and share it with everybody thank you it's all about solidarity and action <laughs> right so I stopped live streaming but um if anybody has any other questions that they want to ask Otherwise, we'll let you all go. No? Um, yeah, so you all know what you're doing now in terms of who's doing what online volunteering, and I'll be in touch in the morning with more information as well. And Millimo will be in well you can all be in contact with Millimo as well with us so if you have any questions in that regard if that's no it questions then. For me. it'd just be great to yeah get more info see what groups we're going to be in and mm -hmm. um yeah if Millimo you have some of those CVs it might be good for us to see what level they're at if you could send on a couple of just examples that would be great all right, I'll do, I'll do that. Okay. But yeah, uh, lovely to meet you today. And uh, thanks a million for uh, facilitating this. Malik. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, Joe. Great. Okay, bye, everyone. See you, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. And thanks, thanks. thanks Millimo. Thank you, Millimo, for your time. Thank you very much. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm.